I've been waiting for SteamOS to officially ship for quite a long time now. I despise using Windows and the extra nonsense that Microsoft is adding to Windows 11 makes it even more of a pain and more alarm bells are going off at this point. And for the most part, when people ask me what they should use instead of Windows, my go-to answer is to use Bazite, but Bazite isn't right for everyone and it isn't right for all hardware. This is something that became glaringly obvious to me very recently. If you have the right hardware, Bazite is amazing. I've been using it exclusively on my ROG Ally X and I love it so much that I wanted to use it on my big screen as well, which is why I'm making this video. But like I said before, you better have the right hardware for it or you're going to end up unhappy just like I did. I don't consider myself to be a console gamer or a PC gamer, I am just a gamer. But if I'm playing games on PC, my use case is very different than most people's. I spend a lot of time playing games on handhelds and I have a ton of different docks to get them hooked up to the big screen. But as soon as you do that, you start to see hits in performance or really soft visuals as everything is running at 720p on a 4K screen. It just doesn't look very nice, which is why I've been considering updating my desktop PC for a long time. This is my current desktop PC. It has been turned off for about six months at this point, and I don't even remember what parts are in this other than the graphics card is an RTX 2060. It is woefully underpowered by today's standards, and as much as I love the way this case looks, it's just way too big. So I was looking for something smaller when I found out about the ROG Nook. It's small, it's powerful, it's whisper quiet. Three things that my current desktop PC absolutely is not. Now, some of you might be wondering why I care about the size of my PC. Well, the Nerd Nest, the room that I create all of my videos in, is a pretty small room. It's 12 feet by 12 feet. It has my editing workstation over here, and then over there is my gaming area. Fitting a massive PC case anywhere over near my TV is a pretty big ask and not something that I wanted to wrestle with, especially considering how underpowered my current PC is. You see, I spend a ton of time at my desk making videos. I don't want to hang out over here when I'm gaming as well. I've always been happier playing games from the couch with a controller, and ever since I broke my elbow, mouse and keyboard gameplay is pretty much out for me. So I definitely wanted something that wouldn't look like a giant eyesore next to the TV, and the ROG Nook looks great next to it. The ROG Nook has an Intel Core 9 185H processor, an RTX 4070 laptop GPU, which is a big upgrade over what I already have, but is not quite as powerful as a full-fledged desktop-powered 4070. It comes with 8 gigs of video RAM, 32 gigs of system RAM, and a terabyte of storage, which is upgradable because it has three M.2 2280 slots, which I will get back to in a bit. The I.O. for this is pretty great as well for such a small system. It's got one Thunderbolt port, four USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet port, HDMI 2.1, dual display 1.4A ports, a headset jack that I'm sure that I'm never going to use, and an SD card reader on the front, all in a 2.5 liter case. Of course, you are paying for that form factor because this thing is quite expensive. It's 1800 bucks, yes. You can absolutely get more powerful hardware by building it yourself, but it wouldn't be this tiny and sleek, and I personally am fine with that. I want this form factor. I want a small computer. Full transparency, Asus didn't sponsor this video, but they did send the ROG Nook to me for free. Although I am under no obligation to say anything about the ROG Nook, they're not going to see this before you do. And hell, I'm not even any under obligation, any of under any obligation, I don't know why that's so hard for me to say, to make a video about it. But I wanted to make a video about Bazite and this seemed like it could work, although more on that in a moment. All right, let's talk about these M.2 drive slots because I decided to buy a four terabyte hard drive for this puppy. It has three M.2 drive slots, but none of them really have room for a heat sink. I ended up buying a drive that came with a heat sink and I could not figure out how to get it to fit inside this case. So I had to pry the heat sink off of there in order to get it to fit into the nook. I haven't run into any heat issues on the drive yet, so fingers crossed that it holds up over time because I killed my warranty for that drive as soon as I yoinked the heat sink off. Once I got it set up, I had to order a long ethernet cord because my switch is all the way over here and the TV is way over there. 
But while I waited for that to come, I started downloading my games, and then I started testing. First, I started with 3D Mark Time Spy, which is software I'd never used before. This got a score of over 12,000. Next up was Cyberpunk 2077. This had an average of 114 FPS, dropping down to 101 FPS at its lowest. I had texture quality set to high, DLSS frame generation turned on, and ray tracing turned off, as I don't really feel it gives enough of a benefit for the frames you end up sacrificing. Then I switched over to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, running at 4K with anti-aliasing set to high, graphics quality set to ultra high, FOV to 100%, and my average frames per second was 64 with a minimum of 31. And then finally, I ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider, pretty much all the settings pushed to the max without ray tracing, running at 4K and my average frames per second was 81, my minimum was 71. Once I had it set up and running on my TV, I ran into that same issue that you always run into whenever you're using a Windows machine on a TV without a mouse and keyboard, and that is the damn UAC prompts constantly popping up whenever you launch a game or games that are launching with launchers that won't respond to a controller, so I decided to nuke Windows and installed Bazite. I was a bit apprehensive, but Bazite's website said it would just work. It just wouldn't launch in gaming mode like it does with the ROG Ally X because Nvidia isn't being super helpful with driver support. So I downloaded the correct file. I flashed the USB drive using Raspberry Pi Imager, turned off secure boot on the ROG Nook. I installed Bazite and then Steam automatically started installing itself. All I had to do was grab my phone and scan the QR code in the Steam app and it signed me into Steam. And then I right clicked on my display configuration. I set my refresh rate to 120 Hertz as that's the highest that my TV will go. After that, I started downloading games and trying them. I told Steam to launch in big picture mode at startup, and I also told Steam to use Proton whenever I was playing games. And then I played some of those games. Everything was fine. It was running great. I didn't actually start doing any testing because I just wanted to mess around with it for a little bit first. Well, I came back a few days later and my screen was totally black. Nothing was working. I could not figure out what the issue was. I thought maybe I had downloaded the wrong version of Bazite. So recently I had interviewed the founder of Bazite on my podcast, the Nerd Nest podcast. Link below if you want to check out that interview. And uh, I sent him an email and I said, hey man, I just want to make sure I'm using the right thing. And he confirmed pretty much I had done everything right. Pretty much all of the troubleshooting options that I tried changed nothing at all. So I ended up nuking Bazite and went back to Windows because of course, Nvidia is probably the issue here. Now my initial plan for this video was to show off how great Bazai is. And it really is great, but not on this hardware. This is why I think SteamOS isn't ready for prime time yet. It's why Bazite isn't ready yet. And it has nothing to do with Valve or Universal Blue. It all comes down to Nvidia not providing the drivers needed at this point. So like I said a minute ago, I reverted back to Windows and I've been using one of these to deal with launchers or UAC prompts. Every time one pops up, I show one of my fingers to Windows. You can decide which finger I'm talking about. And then I grab this, do what I gotta do, and then I'm in the game. It isn't a huge deal, but it absolutely is something that I'm trying to get rid of. I haven't tried it yet, but my friend Kerry, AKA The Fox, has a trio of software solutions he's installed on his PC in order to interact with all of that stuff using just a controller, I'm gonna leave a link to his video down below as well. It's a really good video and definitely something that I wish Microsoft would make that we wouldn't have to do. I'm waiting to see if Microsoft says anything about controller UI for Windows at CES this year. If they don't, then I would probably go back and rewatch Carrie's video and get this thing completely set up to use only with a controller so I never have to hook up a mouse and keyboard to it again. Next, I wanted to use it with my arcade cabinet as well. If you've missed my previous videos about my original arcade cabinet, I'll leave a link in the description down below so that you guys can check that out. This is an original Asteroids Deluxe arcade cabinet from 1980 that I bought from my local warehouse that my wife's family owns for 60 bucks. I got it here and I found out that the circuit board for Asteroids was completely fried beyond, beyond my ability to repair. So I gutted the whole thing, replaced the console with these arcade controls from Amazon, and then I threw a cheap monitor and cheap speakers inside. I was using it with my ROG Ally X as the brains of the operation, but I decided to try it with the ROG Nook. 
I just made the USB-C cable that I was using with the Ally X a little bit longer and plugged it into the Thunderbolt 4 port on the back of the Nook. The arcade controls were instantly recognized and I went through and configured them using Steam Big Picture Mode. This is perfect for playing games like Street Fighter 6 or my main collection, but the experience isn't perfect. For one, there aren't any good ways for me to control the volume of the arcade cabinet because the speakers are actually inside of it. When I had the RG Ally X hooked up, I could use the built-in volume buttons on the top of the Ally X in order to change the volume, but there aren't any volume buttons on the Nook, so that's kind of a pain. The second issue is that the screen I have in the arcade cabinet is limited to 60 hertz, which means if it's hooked up, I have to extend the displays instead of duplicating them, which adds a layer of complexity that I'm not really happy about. If I duplicate the displays, then it goes with the lowest refresh rate available, which means I'm missing out if I'm playing on my TV. So I am currently on the lookout for a 120 hertz, 22 inch monitor that will fit into the arcade cabinet easily and find another way to control volume easily. Though as much as I like the option of having this hooked up to the arcade, I may just go back to the ROG Ally X for that because unless I find some good solutions for these issues, it's just too much of a pain in the ass to use. If I do find a way to nail the arcade experience, I may put out another video later on down the line. So subscribe if you haven't, I would love to hit 100K in 2025. All right, at the end of the day, I'm very happy with this PC. Though if it were up to me, there's a few things that I would change about it. Number one, I wish that Asus would ship these with AMD hardware instead of Nvidia hardware. Nvidia seem all too happy to just chase AI bullshit. They don't seem really willing to make drivers available for Bazite or SteamOS, which is why I think SteamOS has yet to launch. It's why I think Bazite is still not quite ready for prime time. It's not their fault, it's Nvidia's fault, in my opinion. I'd also gladly ditch the SD card reader on the front, as well as a few of the USB ports in order to get access to more USB-C ports. And the reason why is I have tons of USB-C devices and I don't want to have to worry about adapters. I also think that their power, power brick for this thing is insanely huge, although I don't really care about that all that much, is because once you have it hooked up and it's hidden behind something, you can just forget about it. But what do you guys think about this? What would you change about this setup? Give me some ideas down below in those comments and uh, click the like button while you're on your way down there. And before you take off, check out this video right here. YouTube picked it just for you. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad and thanks for watching. Bye bye.